Hi, my name is Mona Lisa Chinda Koka and you're watching Top Niger Stories with Isaac. Don't touch your dad. So growing up was normal. I mean, we're from from a very deep rooted Christian, um, you know, uh, family. My dad was a traditional ruler. He was an AZ at that time, and um, a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right. Normal living, normal upgoing, but very strict and stringent conditions. My mother, you know, <laughs> made sure we got the. Uh, the values and the morals, the morals, you know, being thrown at us at every point in time. So we're not even allowed to make mistakes. And when you make mistakes, there's a lot of slap that will, no need to tell you, you just sit down and have a normal conversation. Your slap is going to correct your mistakes for you. So that's how I grew up and that has made me, then I, I, I didn't like the way we were taught how you know, taught growing up, but now I'm beginning to appreciate the morals and values my parents instilled on us. And honestly speaking, between you and I, I've really never been this frank or very open. Um, I, I, I didn't set out to be an actor. Much as I knew I read theatre arts in the um, uh, in the University of Port Harcourt, but I didn't really set out to say, okay, this is going to be my chosen career from God. No, I was thinking of just going to do normal courses, like maybe law or maybe a sociology. I was actually looking at going to all those very laid back departments apart from law and wanted to just graduate, go into my husband's house, stay, have children, bear children, and just maybe nine to five work and all that if, if it's necessary. That's how I actually thought I was going to, because that's how my mother is until she, my, she, um, my dad, she lost, we lost our dad. So, um, surprisingly, <clears throat> when I wrote my jam, I, uh, my parents made sure I put law as my first course, uh, my first choice in the, in the University of Science and Technology there, and then Ilefe as the second. But, for some divine visitation or reason, I don't know. When I was going to submit that jam form, I quickly erased <laughs> what my parents wanted me to read. And I just say, what level, what level? Is this sociology? What level do I do? English? No. I just put theatre arts. And for me, my cut-off point was overboard. And that's how I found myself, you know, going in, uh, you know, into the University of Port Harcourt. When I succeeded, in erasing <laughs> the law, uh, where they said we should fill, law, fill up for law, and then inserted Theatre Arts University of Port Harcourt. Uh, when the result came out of a shoot, my uh, target line, what they call it, my cut off point, and I was again admission into the University of Port Harcourt. When that result came out, eh? Hmm. My father was the first person that saw it <laughs> and didn't say a word because he's a traditional ruler so he's always in the house when they probably bring meals to him and all that. <clears throat> so my mother, he didn't say a word, we were at home. So when my mother came in from work, she used to work with an NNPC then and I came in to say hello to my mother. Apparently she had opened the letter. So they were just looking at me. I said, what's wrong? So mommy, welcome, what's wrong? <clears throat> they said, what is this? I kept quiet. I didn't say a word. And I said, mommy, I don't know what happened. My friends were feeling for theater arts and there was nobody that knew there was going to be a river state of science, of science and technology at that time. So I wanted to just be with my group of, you know, that was the excuse I gave. And it was from the sincerity of my heart. I didn't want to say anything apart from that. <clears throat> So my parents looked at you and said, go ahead. And so that's where I started reading my, well, my, it's not my preferred course. It's just uh, my 
I know it was a course born out of circumstances, circumstances. So I, I said I, I started reading theatre arts, and surprisingly, I was I, I got caught up with the whole intrigue, with the whole creativity, with the whole you know research of, of art, how it started from Dionysus to you know the the Greek mythology. It was so interesting. So I just had to bury myself into reading all the courses. So they all kind of formed me and I'm just such a creative person. When I'm not doing anything, all I do is just sit down and start imagining all sorts of, <laughs> all sorts of things I, I can't, you and I, I don't even want to talk about it, un unimaginable. So yeah, so that's how. 1993, I was still in, yes, yeah, so I was still in school. And 1993, I was doing a certificate course in theatre arts then, CTA. I was called upon to come because I was very good in acting in school. So I was called upon to come and do one um, soap opera then in NT Aba, Channel 6. I will never forget that Channel 6 Aba. I don't know, does it still exist? NT <laughs> Aba. So me, I, Francis Duru, Ejike Asibus of, of, you know, of, you know, of our, of our times then, then we, they gave me just a minor role or something like that. I think I acted as a secretary to Ejike Asibu. <laughs> so that's how I started. And then I moved to Pregnant Virgin, my first ever feature film, uh, Pregnant Virgin, and then the, the rest, as I say, I say is history. Well, I mean, at some point, you just want to try other areas of interest, as long as it's within the genre of your of entertainment. Yeah, every actor would aspire to want to produce, at some point you want to direct, and at some point you want to own your movie, you want to own your space. So, I think that's just what, it, was just, it came naturally. Well, I started off as, for, as um, um, when I started, I, I wanted to cater for children with special needs. Um, autis autism was my, my focus as at that time. And um, it helped. I did a lot for the autistic um, school and children by the special grace of God. I don't like to um, count my blessings, but since you're asking, this is the first time I'm actually going to be talking about what I do as per charity. So, yes, and then I began to see that there are other areas of needs people wanted, people some want some word of encouragement. Some people just needed to have, you know, smile to people to just give them a smile or something like that. So anyway, I began to go to the prisons to hear, to commune, communicate with the prisoners, talk to them about self-confidence, um, preach to them, because um, I'm also well grounded in in, in Christ, so I um, would preach to them. I would tell them that this is not a, a death sentence, you know, stuff like that. And I began to move into women, you know. I began to move into education, education, helping the poor to go to school, no matter how little you raise. I mean, the child's school fees could just cost as little as 2,000, and they can't afford it. And I went, as, I was just doing so much, a lot, more than even more than I could carry. So half the time I was always broke. <laughs> but you know, this brokerage was just very, I was always happy being broke because I was doing the right thing. I just balance. The Holy Spirit balances it for me. I have no idea. Thank God that I'm married now to a man who just wants me to just be me. You want to go to the moon? Oh yeah, that's the way to the moon. Just know that I'm here, she's waiting for you. So, you see, you know when I was going to get married to my husband, I, I said, I, I didn't date my husband for, for youthful. No, not long, I didn't date. I was in a silly relationship <laughs> that didn't make sense to me. And in deep in my heart, I just thought that that relationship would probably fill up the vacuum because I was always going home lonely at night. You know, I didn't want, I didn't like that feeling. Honestly speaking, I didn't like to be alone. I don't like to be alone. Not because I wanted a man all the time, but because I like family. You know, I like want to, I want to always be a wife, children, thank you, companion. 
So this man was not feeling that vacuum. At some point, after one year of that relationship, I said, to him, I said, nothing happened. I went to London for some job, came back in October 2015. I just told him, I am done. Don't call my phone again. Back up. That was it. That man called me. What have I done? Oh, this is it. Do you want marriage? Let's go marry. I said, I don't want. Just, you know, and that was the end of that, of that relationship. There's no clear definition of love to me. It just means acceptance. It means friendship. It means, it means adequate communication with whoever you're with. It means sincerity of the heart, not just sincerity of action. That your heart is as black as... Uh... So everything is just within, inside of you. So to me, because love is just... Love is easy. Love is... Letting go, and not everything you see, you want to comment on it. Just, you know what, I'm not seeing you, that's love. Whatever thing you do, I'm not even seeing you, as long as you're not hurting me. You know, so I, that's how I see love. I have really fallen in love before. It's the only time I know what love is, so I'm not going to lie to you. Because all that time I was thinking in my head I was in love. I wasn't in love, I was just looking for some means of ex escape. Um, I'm older. Then it was just more of ex explore, to go and explore, an adventure. So I won't call it love, I'll call it some sort of game that had no definition. <laughs> Isaac, between you and I, when I met my husband, I, according to him and my sister-in-law, at the age of 14, I had no idea who he was. But I knew that somebody was always giving me chocolates from London and body sprays and all that. I would say thank you. I had no picture of what he looked like. Even when he came to say, marry me on the phone. I said, are you, who is this? I said, go away, marry you, which phone? Who are you? Anyway, so that's how I, I until I saw him, that was in, I saw him in November. I broke up with that man in October and I saw him in November, three weeks after. And my, he kept explaining to me, hey, you know now, you know, Chrisan, you know those days I used to come and I said, what do you want? Because I used to, I probably, I thought that it was one of those men that would probably want uh, a side chick somewhere, please, you know. He said, ah, he kept reminding me, right? I didn't take him, I didn't take him seriously until he traveled back to Port Harcourt. And then my sister-in-law now, then my friend calls me to say that uh, the dad wanted to see me, my mom wanted to see me. I said, what's this whole scene for? I don't even, Grace, where did you come out from? I've not seen it like in 10 years. So he said, Lisa, please, we just want to see you. I didn't think it had any connection to do with the man I'm married to today. And then I packed my bags and I went to see my mom. First of all, I went to, my mom is a, is a deacon in church and then she used to work alongside with her. Uh, with the canon's wife. So I went straight to her office in church and I saw everybody gathered there. I said, had somebody died? So when I came and all of that, that was how the marriage started. There is nothing like a ceremony. <laughs> no dating. I'm dating my husband as it is. No sexual intercourse. Mm -hmm. My sister-in-law called me on the phone that they wanted to see me, that do I remember Victor, blah, blah. I said, I don't remember. So he said, oh, hold on, pass the phone. So that was how he just started talking to me on the phone. Hey, you know, he started telling, talk, reminding me. I said, I don't know you. I don't know. I said, can I talk to Grace Hunt? Can I talk to my friend? I said, well, Grace Hunt. He said, no, 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 I want to remind you. I want to remind you. I said, please now, I don't know who you are. What do you want? And then he said, okay, he now came to Lagos to see me briefly. So I met with him in some restaurant. The reason why I had to go is because it's my friend's brother. That's why I left my comfort zone to go and see him. Is he still trying to juggle my mem memory as bad how many years ago? Over 30 something years ago. I said, I don't know who you are. You know, I don't know. He said, well, uh, uh, have you thought about getting married? I said, I've been married before. He said, I know. But have you thought about getting married again? I said, what about you? You can't tell me at this age you have not gotten married. He said, I've not been married before, ever. I said, there's something wrong with you. 
at this age? You have not been married? And that was at that point, I just picked up my, I picked up my bag and I said, excuse me, I'd like to leave now. Thank you very much. So I left. He left and then that's how I got someone to come back home. <laughs> Yeah. No, I just went to my mother's office. You know, my mother's office at the at the cathedral, and I saw everybody gathered there. My mind, my mind, my heart was all sunk. Had I somebody died or whatever, you know? And I said I should sit. I sat down. I was looking at my mom. My attention was my mother's face. You know, I greeted my father-in-law, then my friend's dad, now my father-in-law, and I said, I said, please, what's going on? He said, my mother said. <clears throat> Uh, <laughs> these people are here to see you. Do you know him? I said, no, who? I know my friend, yes. I know, I know my friend. I said, do you know the other? I said, and I looked at him. I said, yes. You know? My grand, that's when my father-in-law now laughed. And I said, um, my dear, we want to, um, I want you to be my daughter. The rest is history.